Hi guys, Miguel with Push Chop Japan. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be sharpening two knives. The first knife of the day is going to be this 165 millimeter VG1 Santoku. This is a knife I've had for a couple years and it's really done a great job at everything I've thrown at it. Uh, so I just wanted to say personally that I think the VG1 steels are really underrated or at least not spoken of enough. Um, I know we're up to VG10 now, but personally, out of the two, I have used them both. I have to say VG1 is my favorite. I don't know if you have some at home or you've sharpened them, but to me, they kind of almost, like they seem to feel like a high carbon with how easily they do sharpen and how easy it is to put a great edge on these guys. And the edge retention is pretty super. And also with the fact, I think I can get this guy a little bit sharper than a high carbon. Uh, so it seems to help with the edge retention. You know, when it gets in there quicker with that cutting edge, it does, alleviate a lot more work that you have to put in behind it. So to me, just as a little side note, I love VG10 steel. Um, to, to sharpen these with today, I'm going to be using, as I did in my last video, my Nani Wacho Serra in the 800 and the 3000 stones. These are the first two stones I bought when I first started sharpening and they work so great. I haven't really felt the need to change. I did try other stones. I do have other stones, but these two seem the ones I seem to turn to the most. They are great. So if you're looking for a synthetic splash and go, you won't go wrong with a Naniwa. And no, they are not paying me and I don't work for them, but I do love their product. Okay, to get started, I wanna kind of take off this cutting edge so we can start with a perfectly good dull knife. Yes, it feels as bad as it looks. Clean it up a little bit on the side here. Let's see how it does with the paper not very well well that's still kind of sharp so let's kind of get that a little bit flatter like i say just for the sake of the demo get a proper sharpening And while I'm thinking of it, if you guys do enjoy the videos and they're helping you out, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And if you ever have any suggestions of what you would like to see, I would do my best to get to it and address it as soon as possible. Um, so please keep that in mind. Let's check the paper one more time. I mean, it's still getting in there, but that's, that's still kind of sharp in a couple spots. So let's do that a little bit more. does hurt. It's not a fun thing to do, I'll tell you what. Never thought I'd be putting a file to my knife. Yeah, it's still kind of getting through. Just tells you about how good of an edge you had on there. Uh, I personally love the 70-30 grind. If any of you have ever used a single bevel knife, you know those edges on there are crazy sharp. Uh, so I kind of do that with my own personal knives. I like to do the 70-30. If you're a right-hander and you'd like to try it out, sounds something sounds good when try something different, always make sure if you're a righty, the 70% goes on the outside and your 30% along the inside edge. And to me, it just, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's like a little uh, hot rod, you know, right through everything, slice and dice with ease. I think that's good for this demonstration. It's not really cutting it, so let's see what we can do with this. Um, and to start with, or before I get started, I just want to mention again, these are the Naniwa Chosera Series 800 and 3000 grit stones. 
if you watched my last video, you would know these are the first two that I bought when I started sharpening. They have been so great. I really haven't felt the need to replace them. I have tried other stones just to compare to see if I would like something a little bit better. Uh, but these guys to me seem to always pull through and do what I need. So um, if you're looking for a synthetic splash and go and you haven't got one yet, you won't be upset with the Naniwa. Either see, I think any series, the quality runs through the whole company, every product. Um, and no, I do not work for Naniwa, just as a disclaimer. Um, I just really am very happy with the product I got. Okay, so to get started, um, like I do every time, I put the flat side of my knife down, put some pressure there, and you can see and feel the lip. And all I do is raise the spine until I see that touch and kind of touch with my index finger, the stone to the and, and the, the spine at the same time, and it gives me the angle. So when I do hold it with the rest of my hand, remember the three fingers up to the choil, Come on the chin it gives me my angle every time so if i have to pull away from the stone or I've, even if i put my knife down i know i can come back get my grip thumb on the chin and i know what spot on my index finger i usually rest the spine so that kind of gives me an automatic guide to where i need to be it's something i've been practicing for the last couple years and it works great for me that's what sharpening is it's just kind of practicing on good healthy habits or proper form actually and um, go from there. Again, do it flat. I lift up until I can see that cutting edge touch. Mark it with my index finger on the spine. And I always do like to usually start with the tip. I do usually try to use the whole stone when I can, but just keep in mind when you're moving across the stone, the only part of the blade that's actually being sharpened is where your two fingers are, where you're exerting the pressure. And when I get to the chin, I always push, I put a little bit more pressure with my thumb and this index finger, because uh, with that tiny little curl in the back of a lot of these Santoku and Gyoto type knives, that from, um, they do not have a flat spot, so you want to kind of make sure you get in there and up behind it and concentrate on the tip as well. It always needs its own special attention and finesse. I know you're typically supposed to lock everything from your, the tip of your index finger to your elbow, uh, but when you're getting through the belly, you want to make sure to keep in mind that there is a slight curve to that. It's ever so lively, but still you do want to compensate for that, and that just takes a little bit of practice and working it along the stone purposely seeing where you keep the cutting edge to the stone and that gives you that muscle memory effect in your wrist so when you do get to the belly over time naturally keep practicing it's going to become second nature not a thing but it is a necessary move i think you should keep conscious when you're new to sharpening or conscious of when you're new to sharpening I like to do the 70-30 grind on mine. I love the way it cuts. And I also think it's also good for fine tuning or sharpening when you're maintaining your knife. You know, you kind of work on one side, you know, you get the whole rhythm down. You do most of your work that way. When you come to do the 30% side, it's almost effortless just to get that burr back over. Um, and aside from being a little bit more efficient, I think, when it comes to sharpening, I think it's just a better cutting edge. In my personal preference, I like the cutting edge, as opposed to a 50 and 50 grind. Remember, always smooth, effective, motion effective pushes you know you don't want to push really hard you just want to have enough pressure on your steel to keep it down on the stone you might want to put a little bit of pressure when you're pushing away from you when the knife is this way uh, but not much mostly just like the weight of your hand just enough to kind of push it and keep it down at the same time you want to make sure it's always down keeping that cutting edge to the stone 
relying on the grit of the stone to do the cutting, not the amount of pressure you're putting. Always keep that in mind. If you were like I was when I first started, I always thought pressure was better and quicker. Uh, but all that does is grind away more metal than you need to. Seeing how these Japanese knives are made to last generations themselves, it's better to remove as little as possible every time you put it to a stone just to give it that much more life and keep the original profile as close as possible. These blacksmiths know what they're doing. I'll keep it in their shape. Respect the steel. You know, we'll be very loyal, trustworthy, and always be there for you. Especially if you're passionate about cooking too. It means a lot to have a great tool that does what you want when you need it to. Conscious of the belly here. Not mine, but the one on the knife. type that counts strokes. I mean, I naturally do about one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Just move my finger. I just kind of inch my fingers along, walk them across the blade. A lot of people like to count five or 10 strokes before they move over and do the next part, but I don't. I like to start, move the blade, go back to the front, do the belly, and the heel, the chin. Let's check the burr. See how good we're doing so far. Already does have a burr up there. The tip might need a little bit more attention. But all through here, it's great, great great the chin might need a touch more but it need a little bit more along the tip another thing too about the stance you don't have to you don't really need one foot completely behind you but it's good if you put one foot in front of the other no matter how little or how much it kind of helps with your stability while you're rocking the blade back and forth because you got to remember this is a very flat edge. The flatter and more consistent your edge gets, the better it cuts. And with practice, you'll get it. And remember, I practiced for at least a year. I mean, it wasn't all the time, but I used to do a lot of practicing. It took me about a year, I think, to get a very consistent edge I was happy with every time. There were so many times I would sharpen a knife. Thought I would do good. Did great. Then you have all these little sections that weren't great. They weren't even, consistent. Get frustrated, think about quitting. I just kept doing it. And now, it's something you just wanna do. Get into the habit of sharpening. And if you're not taking a file to them like I just did to this one today, you know, maintaining the knife really is so easy. You keep your knife sharp, you know, you sharpen it before it gets too dull. It's a matter of three minutes sometimes, maybe five. So that is a good consistent edge. Let's do the back side. Traditional way to do this is to flip the knife over. Let's get that dried off a little bit first. Flip the knife over. The index finger on the chin, the thumb on the spine, and these three, I guess they could be up to the choy if you want, but I like to hold them a little bit further back, but everything's got to be comfortable at the same time. Make sure it's a comfortable grip. Don't force yourself to hold it a certain way to match my hands or anybody else's, but make sure it's comfortable. Uh, but this is your basic way you want to hold it every single time. Again, I lay it flat. I can feel that lip. See it? Lift it till I see that cutting edge come up. 
it might come up a little bit more. See now it's the 30% bevel side. Because like I said, I like to do the 70-30% or bevel. And you pull towards you, pressure, not much, just the weight of your hand while you're pulling towards you. And lock your fingers down. Keep everything flat, smooth, consistent, even. Sometimes I do cheat and I'll rest my thumb against the stone when I'm holding the knife this way. So that way as I'm moving across here, my thumb back here will keep the blade a little bit better at the same angle. It really helps. Um, just keeping it at the same angle really is the trick. That's why you need to practice. It's not easy just to freehand sharpen, but they do make clips that makes life so much easier when you're learning. And when you're a pro, either way, most people like me, I think, like to do it freehand. Just do what works for you. It's a little bit of a bevel. But what really works for me is using my other hand. What I mean by that is, take it here, three fingers of the choil, thumb on the chin, index finger on the spine, keep that angle there. I think this is a good way to learn how to sharpen as well. Uh, for me, it's a more comfortable way to do it. Um, for some reason, I just have a lot better muscle memory in my arm holding it this way as opposed to pulling it towards me both work great but whatever works for you is the best way to do it because that way you can grow your own skill natural talent at it go down that's what it comes down to you practice this enough you're going to be talented i was the same way i same did the same thing when i first started sharpening I thought there was no way I'd ever get any better than I did. I used to get a decent edge, nothing to brag about, but I kept at it, kept sharpening. Now I'm just, I'm very confident what I do. It feels good knowing that you could just walk in there, grab a knife and sharpen it, no matter where you get it from or whose it is. And your knives work that much better. Nice burr all the way across there. There. So let's get that burr taken care of with some stroping on the stone at least. Clean that off. Get the rust eraser over here. That seems to take this stuff off pretty good. Or oh, the Nagura dressing stone. Put a little bit more on there. I always hear these things aren't absolutely necessary for splash and goes, but there's a reason they're in the box, I believe. I like the way it feels a little bit more almost lubricated. It allows the steel to glide across a little easier. I know it doesn't really make sense when you're grinding steel, but the, like I said earlier, you're relying on the grit to cut the steel, not so much your pressure. So no matter how or how much pressure you put or how little you put, it's still gonna grind the metal either way. So might as well do it lightly and grind away less. 30% angle. And when you're doing this, you don't really wanna push it all. You just wanna push enough to make sure that blade stays flat and level across the, the stone. You're just rubbing off the burr. Let that grit grind that burr off for you. I usually do anywhere from five to 10 
passes on each side depending on how it feels. It's another thing I didn't mention is you want to get used to your ears. You want your actually at least let your ears get used to the sound that the steel is making as it crosses over the stone. slightest change in pitch could be an indicator as to where you need to fine tune your skills or somewhere you missed and you get a really nice consistent sound coming off that stone you know it's really really clean Not the best effort. This feels like it needs a little bit more. Yeah, it needs a little bit more of an edge. But it's getting there. Remember to only pivot in the elbow and the shoulder. Lock everything else in place. Just make sure you're comfortable. You don't want your hand to cramp or fingers to go to sleep while you're doing this. Because that always seems to happen right when you start feeling great about it. It feels good. Another shot. Much better. Get a nice little S cut out of there on an 800 grit. It's not too bad. So we got a good edge. Put that to the side till we get the 300 out or 3000 out.